Um, well, my background is uh, mostly in journalism, uh, and I, I've been interested in these kinds of issues for a long time, but uh, in early 2005, I, I became aware of the seriousness of the, the combination of peak oil and climate change and economic instability coming together and realized how vulnerable our community was here in, in Boulder. And so my partner and I, Lynette Marie Hanthorn, uh, decided, well, we, we first thought that we, since this is Boulder, Colorado, that we'd just join one of the many local groups who were working on all this, and we found there was nobody. So it was a terrible disappointment uh, to realize that we would have to start all this from scratch. <laughs>
the, the community is. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the initiating group needs to be people who are, who are really inspired, who are well informed about the issues, and who are uh, committed to the, the, the health and well-being of their community committed to bringing transition into that community. So it's tricky to find those people, but that's how that group forms, that initiating group, is, is key to the whole process because that group is going to be holding the vision for their, for their community. We believe, as near as we can tell, that the transition process can work in any kind of community, any scale of community. I, I think the, the, the biggest social issue that stands in the way in, in this country is denial of reality, really. Um, and, and we consider ourselves a highly educated nation, but I, th I think that as, as a people we are, we are in deep denial of climate change, certainly, and there, there are statistics that demonstrate that pretty strongly. We're, we're in almost complete denial of our addiction to consumption, <laughs> our, uh, uh, and of course our, our addiction to, to oil, our addiction to fossil fuels as, as a source of energy. Um, so I, I think that that's, uh, that's the most serious challenge that we face, and, and, and that uh, along with the, the belief that we have in this country that, uh, the, 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 our leaders in government will take care of all of this, you know, and, uh, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's clear now that that uh, our our governments are are not capable of responding to the challenges that that we're facing, uh, and that our what that means is in our communities we're on our own. We can't depend upon somebody else to to solve this. I don't think we have to abolish it, um, and there there are those certainly who. Who do you know, people like Derek Jensen, who, uh, with his deep green resistance movement, is is saying, you know, if if civilization is the culprit, then isn't it our responsibility to bring it down as quickly as possible? And that's a that's a challenging intellectual argument, but we we don't support that. You know, we feel that. Uh, it, it, while it may not be possible to, to change the system, um, and, and it might, and there are some people who are working on that, and we're, we're all for those people who are trying to change the system, but meanwhile, we think it's important to build a parallel system, because I, I believe that, that the current system, in, in any arena that you want to look at, the, the current system is profoundly unsustainable and will ultimately collapse under its own weight. Yeah, that's for sure. So we, but we have to make sure that there is a way to to support and nourish human beings on the planet mm -hmm. in the meantime. There, th I think there are, there are a lot of lessons out of the experience of, of Cuba. Uh, you know, w w one is uh, how important permaculture is, because there were there were many permaculturists already working in Cuba before uh, you know uh, the Soviet Union collapsed and, and their oil supply was cut off almost overnight, uh, and. So the, the permaculturists were able to come forward and redesign the whole agricultural system uh, in, in very, very rapidly. I mean, it was, it was a period, they, they went from a you know, fossil fuel based agricultural system to a, a almost totally organic, uh, local, 
uh, labor-intensive system in a matter of 18 months. And it, was, it was a tough 18 months, but, but they did it. So that, that's the first thing. Permaculture is essential. You know, we all be learning permaculture. Number two, it was easier there because the government mandated it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, a small detail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have a very different situation here. And the, the, the full-blown crisis hasn't yet landed here. You know, so we have this challenge of, of warning people about an emergency that they can't quite see yet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 yeah. over the horizon. You know, well, it's it's not over the horizon in Japan today. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's right in their laps. And uh, as as a result of that, uh, many people today are are greatly accelerating their preparation work because it's it's becoming increasingly clear how vulnerable our communities are and how. Uh, inadequate our governments will be to respond mm. to these kinds of challenges.